Good morning and a very warm welcome to our Palm Sunday service from Biddeford, Landcross, Littleham, Monkley and Weirgifford. And many thanks too to all involved in the preparation and delivery and editing. Our service marks the start of Holy Week as we first celebrate the arrival of Christ into Jerusalem. And during next week there are many services in which we would welcome you to join us as we mark that journey to the foot of the cross, always carrying with us the hope that Christ has promised. As part of our service we'll be blessing the palms uh, and, and celebrating our own hosannas and you might like to pause for a moment here and go and find what you can to make a palm cross. This could be uh, paper or card. It might be something like a daffodil leaf from a garden or a pot. We're going to have a little video tutorial on how to make it in preparation for our celebration. We'll begin our service with praise in the words of Amazing Grace. But as we journey through the service, we reflect too on the events of Holy Week. Sometimes on Palm Sunday we hear the Passion readings. Here we celebrated and read those last week. And so today we will have a short reflection of music and images to remind us of the incredibly important events of this week. The institution of Holy Communion in the Last Supper, the arrest of Jesus, his trial, his condemnation, his journey to the cross, his death and resurrection. We ask you to join us in this journey as we travel this way together. Just before we move into our service, a reminder that it's with great joy that we can share that we will have three live services across the mission community on Easter morning. You can find details on our website, stmaryschurchbiddeford.org, alongside details of other services throughout Holy Week. And the St Mary's Biddeford service will start at 9.30 a slightly earlier time than normal, 9.30 at St Mary's Biddeford. At uh, Holy Trinity in Weirgifford we'll also have a 9.30 service and in St Swithin's Little at 11 o'clock. All these services will be services of Holy Communion and we invite you of course to take communion on this greatest of all festival days. Whether you are able to attend or whether you are celebrating Easter online, we wish you every blessing. But of course, we are still working under COVID restrictions. And so the information uh, tells you how to book a place to attend our services and also about the restrictions that we have to wear masks and socially distance. We look forward to seeing you if possible and if not, to sharing our online worship throughout the coming week.
So much has changed in our world lately. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Jesus. So, before we raise our palms to sing Hosanna as Jesus enters Jerusalem, we're going to have a go at making a palm cross at home. And I've been experimenting with different things in the garden, and I've found that a nice long daffodil leaf will work quite well. You might have other longish leaves like uh, bamboo or you can also use just a long thin piece of card or paper cut into a straight line and sellotape together if necessary. One long reasonably narrow piece of paper. So we're going to take our leaf here, we're going to pick a point uh, just over halfway and we're going to bring the leaf down and then we're going to make a right angled fold in it like that then we're going to bring the bottom of the leaf up over the fold and behind it so that we then start to see the square, the square of the middle of the cross. We're going to take this side now and wrap it behind the square. And here's the interesting bit. When you take this end and you turn you see there's a little gap now in the square that you can feed the tip of the leaf through. Come on, there we go. And then you pull that tight. There we go. Pull that tight through and you have a square that is ready to shape the rest of the cross. Now we're going to make the arms of the cross and to do that we take the leaf and bring it towards us and feed it through the front of the square. Like that. There we go. Do you pull that through but not all the way just about halfway and then we tuck the remaining end into 
the back. And you can adjust your arms to get them even. So we we'll just tuck that in there. And those are the arms of your cross. And to finish it, we're going to take the base of the leaf. And if you look behind, you've got another little gap at the back of the square. And you feed through the leaf at the back from underneath. And when you turn it round, you can adjust it so that it sits as you like. And there you have a cross. And here's the Blue Peter moment. I'm going to show you some examples of crosses that I have made from bamboo leaves that I found in the garden. And they make quite long, narrow crosses, but they are effective. We come now to our Liturgy of Palms. You might like to have your own palm to hand to celebrate. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the Church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that, united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. God our Saviour, whose Son, Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Hosanna.
The Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Let us pray for a closer union with Christ in his suffering and in his glory. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility, and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace now and for ever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Paul's letter to the Philippians was written to the first church that Paul established on European soil in the Roman province of Macedonia. It was written while he was in prison and at a time when he was troubled by the opposition of other Christian workers towards himself and was distressed by false teaching in the church at Philippi. Yet this letter breathed a joy and confidence that can be explained only by Paul's deep faith in Jesus Christ. The reading then is from Philippians chapter 2 and verses 5 to 11. The subject is Christ's humility and greatness. The attitude you should have is the one that Christ Jesus had. He always had the nature of God, but he did not think that by force he should try to become equal with God. Instead of this, of his own free will, he gave up all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like man and appeared in human likeness. He was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to death, his death on the cross. For this reason God raised him to the highest place above and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. And so in honour of the name of Jesus, all beings in heaven, on earth, and in the world below will fall on their knees, and all will openly proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
The old man dozed quietly on his favourite seat by the city gate. The gentle warmth of spring and the subdued murmuring of the trail of pilgrims wending their way into the holy city had set him dreaming, dreaming the dream of every Jew. It was a dream of freedom for his people in their land, the freedom for hallowed tradition and ancient custom with every parent free to teach his child the faith of the fathers. It was the dream for which the old man, like thousands of his countrymen, prayed every day. But in his heart of hearts, he knew that it was only the fond dreaming of old age. He saw a conqueror, triumphant, astride a white charger robed in majesty, before whom the mountains and the hills broke forth into singing and all the trees of the field clapped their hands. A victorious Messiah who trampled his enemies like grapes, their lifeblood flowing like red wine, one to whom the nations of the Gentiles bowed in awe, while the faithful of Israel in triumphant vindication danced for joy on the holy mountain of Zion. The shouts, however, no longer seemed to come just from within the dream, but from without. And the old man crossed the fragile frontier into consciousness to hear real cries of Hosanna and to blink a little at a knot of pilgrims throwing their cloaks on the ground and spreading branches on the road. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. He rubbed his eyes. It was hard to see what all the fuss was about, but as they drew closer, he could make out the centre of attention. And he was rather disappointed. It was a man, but a man having neither the glamour of youth nor the venerability of age. The sort of man who would need to be pointed out in a crowd or betrayed with a sign. He found himself all the more intrigued. For all his disdain at the vulgarity of popular acclaim, he couldn't help wondering about the lonely figure in the crowd. He hoped that the man hadn't entrusted himself to their enthusiasm, for the enthusiasm of the moment was very different to the costly commitment to a cause. They were calling him king, but a king demanded obedience, not excitement. He wondered quite what the quiet figure on the donkey was trying to say. On a donkey? He hadn't noticed that before. Not on foot like a pilgrim, not the stallion of a conqueror or the camel of a desert prince. On a donkey, an ass, a colt, the foal of an ass. Where had he heard that before? He struggled with the familiar ring, the childhood memories of ancient scripture taught long ago. He reached for the scroll at his side, and there it was in the prophet Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Some king, he thought, hardly what the rabbis had foretold. He read on. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. The crowd was now being swollen by some of the earlier arrivals from Galilee, pilgrims coming out of the city to join the throng. And as the old man began to understand what this traveller was saying, his heart went out to the courage of the solitary rider. They'll crush him he thought. Already there were the rumours, the scheming of a frightened establishment, the hasty consultations in the ecclesiastical corridors of power. Was this man seriously taking on the might of church and state, priest and soldier, Jerusalem and Rome? They'll crush him. And what's more, they'll crush him in the name of the Lord. You wait and see. He knew of old the ways of the Sanhedrin. He could see it now, the temple guard picking him up quietly at a discreet spot, probably at night, a quick trial, and he'll be dead before the day is through. He shuddered with a sense of revulsion. 
But even he, shrewd observer that he was, couldn't understand why. Why this defiant gesture, this challenge already doomed, the claim to kingship, to be the Messiah? Why the carefully arranged plan, the deliberate ride to Jerusalem, the donkey, the acclaim, the timing of the Passover? Was there yet more? He looked again at the scroll. A king, triumphant and victorious, humble, riding on a donkey. He was well schooled in the conventional Jewish teaching, the two strands in prophetic scripture, one of the triumphant, all-powerful Messiah, the other of the despised and rejected servant of the Lord, bearing our griefs and carrying our sorrows. And he knew the current expectation of the two Messiahs, the triumphant son of David and the atoning son of Joseph. But this man seemed to stand for both. He was both reigning monarch and humble victim. His throne was not in gold, but on a donkey. His authority not in might, but in humility. He read on in the scroll. He shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The old man suddenly felt ashamed of his dream. Here was no violent conqueror, but a prince of peace mounted on a symbol of peace. No easy cry for him of peace, peace where there is no peace. Instead, he was preparing to pay in himself the supreme price for peace. With this journey to Jerusalem, the final act of obedience to command peace to the nations, his dominion from sea to sea, a king then not just for the chosen race, but for all, Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female. Not the narrow nationalism of the dream, but the universal offer to all of a new way, a new authority, a new king. The old man could scarcely restrain a hosanna. For the first time in his life, here was the possibility of something, of someone he could believe in, a king worthy to be followed, a king worthy even to be cheered, he thought, as he rather sheepishly moved towards the crowd. For were he to stay silent, to fail to join in the hosanna of the universe, he felt that the very stones would cry out instead.
Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray to the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son to give us life. Simon from Cyrene was forced to carry the cross for your son. Give us grace to lift heavy loads from those we meet and to stand with those condemned to die. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Your son watched the soldiers gamble to share his clothes. Transform the hearts of those who make a profit from their victims and those whose hearts are hardened by their work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The thief who was crucified with Jesus was promised a place in your kingdom. Give pardon and hope, healing and peace to all who look death in the face. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. From the cross, Jesus entrusted Mary, his mother, and John, his disciple, to each other's care. Help us also to care for one another and fill our homes with the spirit of your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In Mary and John, your Son created a new family at the cross. Fill our relationships and those of new families today with mutual care and responsibility and give us a secure hope for the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The centurion was astonished to see your glory in the crucified Messiah. Open the eyes of those who do not know you to see in your Son the meaning of life and death. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Joseph of Arimathea came to take your Son's body away. Give hope and faith to the dying and bereaved and gentleness to those who minister to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Simon and Joseph, Mary and John became part of your church in Jerusalem. Bring into your church today a varied company of people to walk with Christ in the way of his passion and to find their salvation in the victory of his cross. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and, and make us one in heart and mind to serve you in Christ our Lord. Amen. As our service comes to an end, we hope that you will journey on with us towards the joy of the resurrection. Christ crucified draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and upon all those you love, this day and always. Amen. <laughs>